My name is April Cassidy. I'm the peaceful wife and the peaceful mom. The worst day of my marriage was in December of 2008. I was trying to understand what was wrong, why we weren't connecting more, why my husband was so shut down. Why would he barely speak to me? Why didn't he want to touch me or be in the same room as me? I had no idea. I had asked him to tell me what was wrong and he would not say a word. In December of 2008, I had been praying and asking God to help me understand, was there something I was doing that was contributing to the problems in our marriage or was it all totally his fault the way I had thought for 14 years that everything was his fault? That day we were at a bookstore at our church, me and my husband, Greg. I found a book called Love and Respect by Dr. Emerson Egerich. And it said that husbands need respect the way wives need love based on Ephesians chapter five. And I was familiar with Ephesians chapter five. I had read it for my whole life, but I hadn't really stopped to think about it. I knew I loved my husband. I knew I wanted to be closer to him. I knew he seemed distant all the time and I was trying to make him come closer and it wasn't working. And all of a sudden I read this about respect and it hits me like, no, that doesn't sound right. So I ask Greg, Greg, this can't be right. This man says that husbands need respect the way wives need love. No, y'all need love too, right? And he said, mm, no, I, I'd say that's right, that husbands really need respect. It dawned on me in that moment for the first time ever that I did not have an A plus on my Christian wife report card that I probably had more of a D minus because I loved Greg, but respect was just not on my radar. I hadn't given it much thought. I didn't know that much about what it meant. I asked him to tell me, well, what is respectful and what is disrespectful? I'll write it down. I'll fix this. I will fix this 14 years of me not understanding this problem and we're going to have a stronger marriage. And I apologized for disrespecting him for over 14 years. I knew I hadn't been very polite sometimes, that my tone of voice wasn't great, that I was irritable and bossy and controlling. In that moment, I could finally see all of that. I repented to him and to God and was mortified. It was the first time in my life I had been confronted with the fact that I was a wretched sinner. I had accepted Christ at the age of five I understood that Jesus died for my sins and that if I trusted him and loved him and believed in him that he could save me from my sin, he could save me from hell. But somewhere I did not grasp the concept of lordship and that's part of it. When you receive Christ, it's as Lord. It's not just he's my savior, it's he's my Lord from now on. So I began to yield myself to the lordship of Christ and begged him to change me. I had spent over 14 years demanding God change Greg and telling Greg, you need to change. You need to be a better husband. You're not loving enough. You don't spend enough time with me. You don't talk with me enough. You don't give me enough compliments. You don't do this and you don't do that. Now I stopped demanding that Greg do what I want and that God do what I want and humbly started to pray, change me. Show me what it means to be a godly wife. Show me what it means to respect my husband. I have missed something huge somewhere. Help me overcome this pride and self-righteousness and help me be the wife you want me to be, that God wants me to be. No matter what Greg decides to do, I want to be the woman God calls me to be and I want to be the wife God calls me to be just so I can stand before God one day with a clean conscience and here, well done, my faithful servant. That day was my least favorite day in my whole marriage, probably in my whole life, because I came face to face with the magnitude of my sin. But it was also the most blessed day. And I'm so grateful that God was willing to answer my prayer to show me what I was doing that was sabotaging our marriage. And a few years later, Greg actually finally, after about three years, told me, I feel safe with you again. Like, I didn't know what I was doing. I spent three to five hours a day, seven days a week for over three years, studying, reading books about godly womanhood, Christian marriage stuff. God 
teach me. And I would pray and I would journal and I would read my Bible and just beg God to help me understand. And I only wanted to see our marriage healed. I wanted to have a chance to make up to Greg what I had done to him to hurt him. And after over three years, Greg said he felt safe again with me, which was the most incredible experience of my marriage. And then he also said, I want you to share the things God has shown you with other wives because he had seen the change in me. He had seen my countenance change, my tone of voice change, my attitude, my words, my whole spirit. God transformed me and he still is. He's still changing me. I'm not perfect. I still am learning every day. Greg asked me to share what I had learned with other women. He didn't want me to keep it to myself because what I learned was so amazing. In 2012, I started my blog, The Peaceful Wife, The Peaceful Single Girl, and this YouTube channel that September. And then a few years later, Greg said, I think you should write a book. So I have The Peaceful Wife, where I share all of the details, the baby steps that I wish I had had. Because the books that I had read were great and some of them helped me a lot, but other times I was just still so lost and I needed the dots to be connected a lot closer than they were. I didn't have a mentor, so my books were my mentor. This is the book I wish I had had. If you are a wife with a strong personality who tends to be very take charge and a go-getter and maybe a type A personality, this book is especially written for you. It's really not written from the perspective of a wife who was abused because I just wasn't in that situation. This book is for women who are more type A, strong personalities that need a little help reining in and seeing from a new perspective so that they don't steamroll their husbands and they don't force their way. This book has life-changing information and you can look at the reviews on Amazon or Christian Book or barnesandnoble.com and see the lives of women that have been transformed. It's not because I am so amazing. It is biblical principles that God gives us in his word, but I just compile it, put it all in order, and make it easy to follow and easy to digest and to understand. And then my second book, The Peaceful Mom, has principles that can help you have peace with God and peace with your children, with your husband, with other people. If you do not have peace in your life, The Peaceful Mom can help you. It will show you the baby steps Thank you so much for watching. You can also find me on my blogs, PeacefulWife.com and PeacefulSingleGirl.com and Peaceful Wife blog Facebook page. I appreciate you watching and I hope that you will choose to have a peaceful day in Christ.